from Alabama is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you to all of our witnesses for taking your time to be here with us today, particularly to talk about such an important issue. I wanna echo what several of my colleagues have said. The United States is facing a devastating fentanyl crisis, which is only growing worse um, on the daily uh, by the crisis we see at our southern border. Now we know what we need to do when it comes to our southern border. We need to secure it with personnel, more personnel, physical barriers, technological barriers. We gotta fix the broken asylum process. We have got to stop the abuse of parole, bolster interior enforcement, execute final orders of removal and catch and release, uh, put back in, remain in Mexico. We owe it to the citizens of our great nation to secure it and to help stop the flow of fentanyl. And make no mistake, this is a national security crisis, an economic crisis, and a humanitarian crisis. The cost on humans is actually heartbreaking and gut-wrenching. The massive influx of fentanyl into the United States has left no community untouched. The day after Christmas, law enforcement in the state of Alabama seized enough fentanyl from two individuals in North Alabama to kill every single person in our state's largest two cities. Um, and you start to think about that and think about the impact of that just in one seizure. We've heard many stats today, over 379 million doses of fentanyl were seized across America in 2022, enough to kill every single American or every single Alabamian 75 times over. The results of this poison, it's flooding our country and um, we see what's happening, it, it's clear. There were more than 100,000 overdoses, 112,000 to, to be exact in 2023, and fentanyl is now the leading cause of death between the ages of 18 and 45. I think it's critically important that we think about this crisis beyond simple statistics, though. These numbers represent real people. They represent pain. They represent tragedy. They represent loss. They all have faces and stories that are touching every corner of our society. Uh, Mr. DeFord, uh, congratulations on your tremendous success. We appreciate you being here today and you sharing your personal story. I wanna say um, your story is one of salvation and I am so grateful for your willingness. I think a lot of times people in life just share their peaks. That's all they want you to see. And your willingness to show valleys um, and then to show and talk about your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to talk about climbing out of those valleys, that is going to give somebody else the courage to climb too. And so thank you, please keep telling your story um, and thank you for your willingness to do it here in such a public way today. Um, you know, as we sit here, though, not every family has a story of success like that. This, there are families that tonight when they sit down for dinner in Alabama or wherever they may be across the nation, there is going to be a chair where someone should be sitting, where they're not because of fentanyl poisoning and because of the effects of this drug. And we saw this um, last year when a two-year-old, a beautiful little two-year-old, was found dead in Alabama with fentanyl in her system. And as I've traveled our state and our nation, I routinely hear these stories of heartbreak and tragedy um, that, that just are, are gut-wrenching. And when I was at the border last year, I went to San Diego and a DEA officer was sitting there talking to us and they told us the story of a mom who had two boys. She had two and they broke apart and shared a Percocet and you'll know this story and it was laced with fentanyl and both of those boys died. As a parent, no one should ever go through that. No parent should have to deal with that heartbreak. And so as a mama, I am ready for us to do something now, not tomorrow, today. I think we owe it to the kids across this great nation. And so I just would like to say, I'd like to know from y'all's perspective, where are the gaps? We see technology changing. We see even what China's doing, you know, bringing precursors, getting them to Mexico across our border. We now see them liquefying, you know, fentanyl, all of the things. Where are the gaps? And I am, I am almost out of time. So um, I'll just ask you, where are the gaps in our technology? What do we need to do more of? We'll just go down the line and then I'll, I'll be out of time. Give the ability for federal law enforcement to wiretap encrypted applications. Thank you. 
Yeah, we need those extra tools to map map the organizations and and hold them accountable. And Mr. DeFord, do you have anything to add? I just want to just add to your sentiment that the, the 109,000 people that died in America last year are people. They are humans. Every one of those signified a funeral, a eulogy, a mother, a father, sons, children, cousins, uncles, people just like the people in this room. I think it was really important for you to say that, and thank you for that. Thank you.